Good evening. It is uh, Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. It is 7.31 p.m. And I'd like to call to order the special meeting of the Norwalk Common Council. If you'll please rise and join me in pledging allegiance to our nation's flag. <laughs> Which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Dixon, if you'll please call the roll. Mr. Burnett. Present. Mr. Goldstein. Here. Mr. Lopez. Here. Ms. Majulski Eichner. Present. Ms. Smith. Here. Ms. Ayers. Present. Mr. Seed. Present. Mr. Wiggins. Here. Ms. Young? Here. Ms. McMurr? Here. Ms. Murray? Here. Ms. Dunn? Here. Mr. Sutton? Present. Mr. Frere? Here. Ms. Shanahan? Here. We have 15 and we have a quorum. 15 present, we have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is public participation. I don't see anybody in the council chambers, but I do see some, uh, I see six people in attendance. And it looks like uh, Ms. Laura Cella has her hand raised for public participation. If you please unmute yourself. Good evening, Mayor and Common Council and staff. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, first of all, thank you for allowing hybrid uh, uh, testimony. Appreciate it. Good evening. Um, my name is Diane Moricella, 21 Little Fox Lane. Uh, the council today has a big, a big job once again that comes every year. Your roles are important. They're tough. Uh, but I want you to do your homework and sometimes actually get opinions from people that are not within your enclosed uh, city hall, because there are many terrific uh folks that have been around or they are new and they have open ideas that you should listen to. I, I, I tonight would ask that you do not raise the cap because I believe, and I have studied the budget for one reason or the other for, for several decades, there is still room to cut out the fat. One way is doing things like across the board, and I will be asking BET to look at this, across the board cuts to the electricity charges in the operating budget. That will finally encourage those that continue not to optimize a robust renewable energy use to do so because they won't have as much money to use for fossil fuel and natural gas, et cetera. I ask also that you look at the many revenue sources that are untapped, they're still on the table. One way, which I have been speaking about for years and some of you have also mentioned, is the need for a full-time grant writer. Now, these are things that I will be saying to the Board of Estimate and beyond. We need also a good IT department that can make our website, which is a major form of communication, stellar. It is not right now. Lastly, many expenses that we have are due to short-sighted, what I would call short-sighted policy decisions, such as, for instance, the Board of Ed utilized a private building for their terrific idea, the Family Center, the Family Welcome Center. I love that idea. We just should have put it in one of the many city buildings we have with idle space. It would have saved us money in the long run. Also, of course, the electricity and waste management policies. I do believe the city and, and the public school system has a top two top heavy administration. Um, and I do believe lastly, that having a more robust, fair but robust enforcement structure would definitely bring in some cash and also upgrade our quality of life because people would get the message. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I took a walk down Washington street and I know that we're looking at uh, business development that will be looked at by BET tomorrow night, including planning and zoning and everything under ECD. Washington Street is an alarm bell because there are so many empty storefronts. 
I'm sure that our business development folks have been looking, and I am very pleased with the what we know as BJ's wholesale site. I would like to think the ECD d- division. You're now at three minutes. Okay, I'll wrap up. So I wanted just to say good luck tonight. Don't raise the cap and speak to the people to find more opportunities in our budgets. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else joining us virtually wishes to comment to the council? Please raise your hand now. Mr. Bonifant. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. I guess you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I'm just ask you to uh, keep keep the taxes as low as possible. Um, it, it's uh, it gets kind of like a little rough on the taxpayer to be carrying as much as there are as they are, and you eventually you'll be chasing the paying customer out of town. Um, I think I, I don't know if it's been discussed along the way, but maybe we ought to rethink the enterprise zone that once started off as an industrial thing that was trying to create jobs and get um, industry started has turned into subsidizing apartments that really don't create jobs. So, and it's kind of like asking the regular taxpayer to carry their own and others too. So, Thank you, and keep our taxes as low as you can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonifant. Anybody else that wishes to address the council? Anybody wishes to address the council? If you'll pre- please raise your hand, and we will unmute you. I see nobody uh, wanting to address the council, so we'll close out public session. First item on the agenda is resolutions from the Common Council. Mr. Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item 401 reads as follows. Resolution, whereas section 1-289 of the North Charter requires that a majority of the Common Council vote to establish a specific spending limit on local expenditures during the process of establishing the next fiscal year's operating budget. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Common Council of the City of Lowell that the maximum limit on the total appropriation for the City of Lowell for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2024 shall be no more than $440,611,996. This appropriation cap represents total expenditures of $467,591,788, less estimated intergovernmental grants of $26,979,792. Be further resolved that the result of this vote and resolution be forwarded by the Clerk of the City of Norwalk to the Board of Estimate and Taxation. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move this item. Okay. Um, just as a quick recap, um, this uh, the operating budget cap came before the Finance Committee at a special meeting on February 22nd, whereby the Finance Committee voted to move the recommendation to the full council on February 27th. Uh, a presentation was made uh, by the Finance Department at both of those meetings. Uh, At the Common Council meeting on the 27th, the item was tabled to allow for further um, research, discussion, and review of the operating budget cap and the related materials. And now uh, this motion is before us tonight to vote uh, by charter. Um, We're required to set the cap on the date of March. Thank you, Mr. Burnett. Further comment or question? Ms. Sayers? May I offer an amendment at this time, Mr. Mayor? Okay. The maximum limit on the total appropriation for the city of Nawa for the fiscal year 2023-2024-20, 
sorry, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2024, shall not be more than 440 million nine nine thousand eleven nine hundred and eleven thousand nine hundred and ninety six dollars. This appropriation cap requests total expenditures of four hundred and sixty seven million eight hundred eight thousand eight hundred and ninety one thousand and seventy eight seven seven hundred and eighty eight dollars less estimated intergovernmental grants of twenty six million nine hundred and seventy nine thousand seven hundred and ninety two dollars um I would like to speak to the amendment also Mr. Mayor if I'm able so my um, reason for amending what was um, stated by my colleague, Mr. Burnett, is simple. Um, many things have unfolded since the last time that this council was able to meet. Um, we are still trying to get our footing in our bearings um, of the budget for this year with limited information that was given to us. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, um, I am pleased to say that this is my third budget cycle. And since I was elected to this table, I have been standing on my platform and speaking about the need for IT in the development of cyber security, so the safety of not only um, city employees, but our systems, our city systems. As I have perused this book very briefly, I have not seen that allocation. I know in the beginning of our budget book, Mr. Mayor, it has identified that your future goals are to address the IT through um, hiring of personnel, I would say to my colleagues that three years we have put this off. And unfortunately this year, we have all experienced some hate through um, technology. Technology is great when it works and it's horrible when it doesn't work. And it's even more offensive when it's allowed to be a vehicle for people to attack us. The time is now to really address our cyber need in technology in our IT department. Additionally, Mr. Mayor, while I have the floor, I would like to also bring to my colleagues' attention, particularly those colleagues of mine that sit with me on the Community Service Committee um, of this council, that unless I missed it, and again, we're, we're working on our feet here, there is no allocation for our, our current family navigators. Um, that is an integral part of the community service department, and I know that um, they were grant funded for a while with the understanding at this fiscal year, we would bring them into our budget. Again, looking at what was given to me today, I have not seen that allocation. And so that's why I'm offering up this friendly amendment to my colleagues, and I hope that you will vote for it. If you choose for whatever reason not to vote for it, I understand. Um, it is only an addition of $300,000. I don't even think it would budge us. Either way, it's $300,000 um, that I have added with my fri fri friendly amendment. In conclusion, I am tired, frustrated, irritated, and dare I even say pissed off that we are yet in this situation where we have to pinch pennies and scrub a budget and ask people to go beyond their job with little to no resources. You can't value people, but do not allow them to work and, and thrive in full success. Um, you, we can't say to our fire and our police, you guys are great and you're our first responders and we respect you, but we constantly cut and move and shift things. You cannot say to community service that these are needed um, resources. We do not have an action agency in Norwalk anymore with the close of NEON. So our community service department is really feeling in the gap as well as our health department is really filling in the gap of a lot of services that our community needs. And I'm not for crazy increases because we all want to stay here. We all want to live here. There's a reason why we are here. But if we continue the way we are continuing, I have colleagues that haven't even spoken on the budget. They are deathly quiet. And I suspect, I know why, I'm not going to say it publicly. And then I have colleagues that over talk on the budget and, and talk to us as if we we are not as in tune as they are. 
as I said, Mr. Mayor, it's frustrating. I come to this table to do my very best, my very best. And I say every budget season, I lay it on the table and I'm okay when I walk out the door. But tonight, Mr. Mayor and my colleagues, I will not be okay because we have not done our due diligence. And some of it is not our fault, but we could we could, we, we could do better. We really, really could do better. And we should expect and have accountability for ourselves. We always tell our constituents to hold us accountable, but you need to start holding yourself accountable. And we need to do the people's work. And we need to understand that there's checks and balances. And when the pendulum swings one way too far, it's gonna come crashing the other way. And we can't cut everything because that's not realistic because our city is growing and we have needs that we have to be realistic for. And I, I will be at the BET and I will speak to the BET. And I pray that my words will not go on deaf ears. I'm not optimistic that they will, but I pray that they do not go on deaf ears. But the, the page has to turn and we have to stop this. I don't even know what to call it in public. I know what to call it behind closed doors, but I don't know what to call it in public, but we have to stop. We cannot continue to function in, in, in this crazy chaos. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you. There's an amendment on the floor. Is there any other comment on the amendment? Mr. Joseph Eichner. Mr. Seeds. Let me proceed. Last time. Um, actually, I came here pretty sure I was gonna vote. Um, but I do think that the amendment that Ms. Harris put on the table is a good one. Um, I also believe that um, things that she pointed out, like the IT and also um, the family navigators, the things that were brought to us from our constituents that they said, please don't, they said to us last night, please don't take away the family navigators. And going through this book that we got tonight, um, it's not there. Um, so I think with this, increasing it by $300,000, um, I don't think it's going to break the budget. Um, and I do think that with scrubbing the budget and maybe making some other cuts, um, we will be able to put in like a grant writer that will be able to pay for themselves. Um, everybody knows that I'm really passionate about keeping the taxes low and not pushing people out. Um, but I do think that this is a good amendment. Um, and it's something that's needed and was brought to us from our constituents. Thank you. Mr. Joe Schechter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, and I will um, will say that I also would support uh, this amendment. I think that, you know, we've, we've been back and forth a lot about you know, complications of having a council role where all we do is set the cap. So I genuinely don't know if three hundred thousand dollars or three hundred fifty thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars, or you know what the right number is here. But I think what we are trying, what I think my colleague was errors, if I can um, speak my interpretation of what she's trying to do, is to send a signal to the BET. We have identified certain needs. Our role as the council is to hear from our community. We have heard from our community things that could come up consistently for us our struggles with the IT services, ways that people feel like they are not getting the access to that they need, the communications that they need, the inefficiency that sees that we encounter when we interact with, with um, city government in ways that don't align with our experience of how um, you know, other institutions are now using technology. Um, and so I think I am reflecting this hope that we can signal to the BET with a small increase that we are asking them to be strategic in their thinking not to just sort of look for the, the lowest dollar value, but for the most efficient, most effective dollar value. And that includes making investments in programs that have been proven to be effective. Um, I was un unaware until <laughs> five minutes ago that the Family Navigators Program um, was not funded. I think we're all struggling with the fact that we just got our budget books tonight. And again, I think that's also a signal that we, you know, that a, a, a small amendment signals here is to, to say to the BET, um, we, this is a fluid situation. We understand that the mayor and that the rest of the staff is reevaluating constantly, that there have been changes, you know, sort of up to the last minute, we are, we understand that. But at the same time, um, we are not yet sure whether these are exactly the right even versus is exactly the right cap. We think that there is potentially some room and flexibility that needs to be considered here. Um, and so in that sense, I think a small amendment is a good indicator of um, my sense of encouraging fluidity and creativity. Um, and again, really strategically thinking about 
investments. I, I will I will echo the grant writer. I will echo the navigators. I will echo IT. Um, we just recently heard um, in the public works meeting about the value that our part-time grant coordinator has contributed in terms of our ability to leverage what is now over $8 million uh, in grants. Um, that's pretty impressive for a part-time person to be able to help bring that kind of revenue into the city. And I'm excited about what we could do with some additional support there. Um, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Murray. <laughs> Yes, um, I came into this meeting not realizing an amendment would be put on the table and really feeling like we were at the threshold of what our um, taxpayers could afford. But uh, echoing everyone else's comments, uh, particularly Councilman Seeds, 300,000 is very reasonable. And as uh, the majority leader has stated, it sends a message that these are values that we find important. I think a grant writer would uh, bring in value I think we heard uh, recently that our part-time grant writer brings in $8 million for the city, as a majority leader just said. Um, so this, these are these are values that are important. It doesn't move the needle uh, and it sends the BET that, that we find these roles uh, necessary. So I just wanna lend my support to this amendment. Mr. Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess I'm not quite clear on what this amendment is actually stating. Uh, is it stating that we're looking to increase the operating budget cap? Because that is what we're voting on tonight. We're not voting on individual line items in terms of what departments will get what amount. We're, we're, taught, we're voting on an overall budget. Maximum amount of spending, which in turn will be presented to the Board of Estimate Taxation for the BT to do the line-by-line -line review and appropriation of that operating budget cap. If the BET and their deliberations come back and say, well, we recommend additional amount of money go to said department, IT, community services, navigator positions, et cetera, then they would come back and they would share with us that they're recommending an increase of that cap. And here's the reasons why. We want to allocate additional dollars to these specific line items, in which case then the council would vote yes to in increase the cap or no, keep the cap the same. And they would have to reallocate money from other line items in order to keep the cap the same. Essentially by increasing the cap, we're increasing taxes. That's what we're doing. We're increasing taxes by increasing the cap from what is presently at. We have seen the presentation in terms of what the impact to taxpayers will be at this stated operating budget cap, which shows our, our expenses for the upcoming fiscal year. But essentially by increasing the cap, we're saying we're going to increase taxes. So I'm trying to get clarity on what is this amendment actually for? Because just because we increase the cap, we cannot designate that that increase goes to any specific department. That's not the role, that's not the role that's before us tonight. Mr. Goldstein. I was going to respond to my colleague, um, Council Burnett, thank you for your um, words. If you heard the amendment, I clearly said in the amendment, the cap. Um, that's why, I'm sorry, that's why I was asking for clarity, because I, I, I didn't hear clearly. What exactly is the amendment? If I, can I, can write, I can read it again for you, but it was it was stated it was about the cap. It was not about particular line items. I asked if you remember, Mr. For the mayor to give me um, some time to speak on particular items in the budget, but the amendment was about the increase of the cap by three hundred thousand dollars. That is what the amendment on the floor. So, currently okay, so that's the to increase the cap by yes, hours. that is the amendment currently on the floor. The the extra stuff I said was me stating what my passion and what my desire and what I have talked to my constituents about. But the amendment, as was stated, is for the increase of the cap by three hundred thousand dollars. Mr. Goldstein and then Mr. Wiggins. So I, I am. I will admit I came into this meeting thinking one thing, and I'm actually, um, I think a lot of the arguments that I've made tonight are actually really persuasive, and I think I want to lay out why. Taxes are already going up. 
taxes are going up for a lot of reasons, some of which are outside of our control, some of which are things that we have um, made great efforts to delay as much as possible. For example, we use federal money um, to provide tax relief through the ARPA funds for the last couple of years. Um, unfortunately, with the revaluation, it really has a paradigm shift um, or more in, in terms of the disproportionality of our residential burden on the on our grand list versus our commercial. We know, we know in the presentation, it was about 71.5% on the residential side um, for it's about 28% on the commercial side. I think that one of the prevailing arguments here, and I think that what um, Ms. Ayers and Ms. Ayers can tell me if I'm wrong about this, which is I believe that her um, amendment is for an additional half a point, you know, increase. When she says $300,000, there's already an increase that's largely mandated by um, contractually mandated increases, plus I think about an extra um, percent to make sure that we are doing what we need to do on the city side to do the things that we promised voters that we're going to do. We want to make sure that our streets are safe. We want to make sure that our police and fire have as much funding as we can afford to protect us. We want to make sure that we um, are making sure that our sidewalks are new and, and we can build, build new and safe and beautiful sidewalks, among other things. One of the reasons that the revaluation is the way it is is because people really want to live in Norwalk. People want to live here. We've done a lot right. That's why Norwalk is a desirable place to live. And no one has... And I don't think any of us voted us in, 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 into office to shirk on that progress. We have to do so within our means, but that doesn't mean that we should be unwilling um, to figure out ways to make the best strategic investment. Um, I think that one of the things, and I think to answer the question that Council Member Burnett asked, was what is the purpose of this amendment? And I think that both Council Member Ayers, Council Member Njowski Eichner, and council member seat have already kind of given the answer to this question, which is it is a signal to the BET to make sure that that we are investing within our means, but not, not losing our opportunity to make strategic investments that are going to make the city better. Overall, if you look at the budget presentation from a few nights ago, the overall impact on a person uh, from person to person is frankly negligible when you talk about zero to you know to a half. I realize that any increase is something we should be taking seriously, but I I think that considering this is not the final vote on the budget, it is important at this point to say to the BET, the council wants to see that the BET is gonna do everything it can um, to make sure that we are going to make strategic investments um, in, in, in um, making sure that the future of our city is not being lost because of the revaluation. So I will be supporting this amendment tonight. Mr. Wiggins. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. I, something just triggered me. Um, you just said, you said, Josh, people want to live here. Um, I think it's important. Yes, people want to live here. People are coming here to live here. I think it's important for us to really focus on people that help build the city. Right. So we talk about that point or that point. A lot of people could be affected by this, right? Um, I understand how important it is, you know, in the sense of some of the things that we need to to make this be more safer and all the things that you guys are mentioning in um, IT and all that stuff. I think that stuff is important. And obviously we don't have the um, liberty to really vote on line items, but, but for me to support something like that, I would have to be sure that um, other things that we might not need is being cut. Because, I, you know, when I think about my constituents and, and what my constituents want, sometimes they can't speak to the things that we're talking about, but they can speak to just the everyday life that, you know, they're being affected and pushed out, right? And that's, you know, raising the rent. And if raising, you know, taxes, property taxes is going to ultimately trickle down to raising the rent, I'm not supportive of it, but I do think it's 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 extremely important for us to really go back and look at positions within the city <clears throat> and the things within the city that cost a lot and that can be shaved down. Um, I think it's important that we look at that and see if it's effective. And and I do agree with uh, 
the, the fact that we might can use a grant writer that can pay for itself. I, I think all of that stuff is important, but not at the cost of, I don't care if it's a pen, a, a file, point, whatever. If it's going to raise taxes and ultimately raise rent, I'm going to be against, you know, so. Okay. Ms. Murray, you had your hand up. Did you pull it back? Yes, I pulled it back. He, he addressed my question. Sure. Uh, Ms. Smith, you. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, this has been a most unusual budget season. Uh, coming in tonight and seeing the budget book sitting here waiting for us as well, they're here, but it's not very helpful that, uh, you know, we're, we're only looking at them here as we, we're at the second time we're here to vote on this. So um, it, it's been a, a problem for me that we haven't had the full budget book because, you know, that's where we get the rationale for what the departments are asking for. Um, I'm glad we have it. Um, I do want to um, go back to when Ms. McMurr asked for the list of, um, I believe it was, yeah, after the finance meeting, right? The list of, um, Oh, oh, it was when the presentation to the Common Council uh, for the list of, um, of requested positions. And I saw those community services um, positions and I started making phone calls right away, right away. Uh, I have been in to talk to the mayor about it as well. Um, this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. The community services department um, was something I supported right from the start. Um, and when Lamont was hired, he talked to me about this, um, the family navigators. I was behind it and, um, you know, it took him, took him a couple of years to get it up and running with the grants. But um, I, I am aware that um, this is the year that the city was supposed to absorb it. Um, and so... I feel really strongly about these positions. They they have to happen. They cannot go away. And I know, you know, Mayor, we talked about this. You're working on uh, ways to fund it. Um, and 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 I thought, well, I'm going to go to the BET. I'll go to the BET and talk about it. And 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 it's such a small amount of money that you know maybe there's some scrubbing here and scrubbing there. But I'm I am compelled to you know and 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 we talked about this in our caucus last night. I didn't think I could make the pain. I could vote for making the pain any worse. I really didn't. I, I mean, this is a painful um, season because of Greeville. And, and as um, you know, Mr. Goldstein pointed out, I mean, we live in a very desirable city and, and, and that is why our uh, property values have gone up so much. Um, and so it's a good thing, but it's a painful thing. Um, I do feel that, um, you know, these other, you know, IT and, and the grant writer, I think that might be something we, because of the reval and the, and the increase in the taxes, that might be something that we want to look at for next year, plan for next year. But but these uh, family navigators cannot go away. So um, they, they've helped so many people and, and we can't, and, and it, we can't take away services from the people who, who are really in need. So um, I have, you know, been moved to change my mind on the floor before, and and that is such tonight. I will support this amendment. And I can just put your mind at ease regarding family navigators. <clears throat> As you said, we are in discussions about keeping them, and we have other things that we're looking at. So one way or another, we will have the family navigators. Great. It's glad to hear that. Uh, Mr. Go, uh, Mr. Johan for uh, oh. Mr. Lopez. Well, we try to get people yeah, who haven't spoken okay. yet. So thanks. Everyone. So I mean, when I just look at the budgetary numbers, especially post COVID, reval where property taxes are obviously going to go up, prices are up in almost in every single market. Uh, you know, interest rates are gradually going down. It's difficult for me to, even if it's a margin tax increase, to impose this on the rest of our our residents. So it's difficult for me to make that determination right now and and lift the cap. Based on you know, based on what was what was just you know mentioned, so based on the numbers in themselves, I mean, it's difficult for me to support any sort of uh, increase at the moment. Ms. Shanahan. Um, so this is the most difficult budget season I've had in my three terms as a council person. This revaluation has had a particularly harsh consequence on on all of our residents here in Norwalk. And we've got to be conscious that this burden is going to continue to fall on our residents for the next five years until the next revaluation. And while this year might provide the big shock to our homeowners, whatever we do in this budget will continue to compound year after year. 
this council has been always conscious of trying to make sure that our tax burden never forces out longtime residents and that we don't discourage new residents coming to our city. And I have to say that this city is so frugal that I'm constantly amazed about the good work that we get mm -hmm. done with being so conscious of the burden we place on our taxpayer, uh, taxpayers. And I believe, believe that the mayor and his staff have scrubbed this budget to make sure that whatever savings could be found have been, and that we've been prudent in our funding and essential services and projects going forward. And that I hope that we'll continue to find some efficiency, efficiencies by going back to the efficiency study and other um, opportunities for sharing expenses maybe with the BET, with the Board of Ed. I do continue to worry that the Board of Ed, we haven't spoken anything about that tonight. Um, I don't feel as though they're as transparent as we would like to be, have them be, so that we could be reassured that their budgets are doing the same level of belt tightening that the city is doing. I'm concerned about that. And I do hope that the Board of Estimate will do their work, that they might find some additional revenues and some encouraging savings. And while Ms. Ayers has some really good ideas and about some special projects that she thinks is essential for the city, I think that all of us have things that we really want the city to fund because we think it's so important for the good functioning of the city. But however, this is a crushing tax burden this year on our residents. And I feel as though, um, even though 300,000 is a symbolic um, suggestion to the BET to take some look at some things to fund. I also think that it's important for some of us to symbolically say, this is really expensive and it's really tight and we don't want to lose our residents. So even though I do appreciate Ms. Ayer's amendment that it is a symbolic request, I for myself have to say that I can't support it for the reasons I said. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Freyer. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, we've heard that this is uh, indeed a, a very, very difficult uh, budget uh, cycle that we're going through. Um, I've been a resident of Norwalk for 48 years. I don't recall anything this onerous that I've ever seen before. Um, to uh, say to our citizens that the Common Council uh, is going to raise the cap a dollar, I think, is insulting. It It's insulting to all of our citizens that we don't feel enough that we should be biting the bullet now. This is it. And start to look in earnest to find ways to make our city more efficient and cheaper to operate. So I, I, would, I would definitely not vote for anything that would raise the cap more than a dollar. Yeah, thank you. Ms. Um, McMurr, and then um, thank you, Mayor. So I also came in this evening with a statement prepared. I'm going to go off notes tonight, guys. Ooh. Just something I never do. Um, so bear with me. I was going to vote no on this budget tonight for a lot of the reasons that have been said, but also just for the mere fact that I don't feel like we we say no all the time. We say no to things all the time. Um, we are constantly scrubbing and crunching numbers and being more and more frugal every year. And this year is brutal. Nobody can deny that. But as Ms. Shanahan said, next year is going to be brutal. And four years after that are going to be brutal too. So are we going to say no every year until we have another reval? How are we going to continue to grow as a city if we continue to say no to everything? And I'm not saying say yes to everything. 19 headcount is a lot. But if we continue to say no and we continue to grow, what are we doing? What are we providing our citizens with? There are things that are needs in that 19 count. And I'm not saying, again, that we add five or 10 of them. But how do we come up with a strategy where starting this year, we say maybe we'll add two. And then next year, maybe we'll add one. We need to start looking at this strategically instead of being reactive year after year and saying no to everything. We cannot continue to keep growing the way we are growing without adding any headcount or any services. It just doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. I don't know where the math equates there. So I was going to vote no on this. I'm voting yes for that amendment. And I don't think it's enough personally. And honestly, that point, what is it? 0.5%, $300,000. What is that like a couple of dollars a year? It's already brutal. A couple of dollars a year is not going to force people to move out of this city. The reval may, which is out of our control, but a couple of dollars is not. I'm sorry. Thank you. 
Thank you. Ms. Najulski, I can never believe. Mr. Seed. Oh, Mr. Seed. Yeah, and I just want to say because like I, I definitely agree with Mr. Wiggins, and I think we mentioned that last week. But I think this extra, especially I understand that you said we're going to one way or another we're going to get the the family navigators. The family navigators are going to help keep people in Norwalk because they're going to connect people with resources that they need. So to me, that extra extra percent where the taxes are already going up, the extra couple of dollars to help keep people in Norwalk because they're going to have the resources to find energy assistance or rental assistance or di different things out there that can help them stay in Norwalk. That's why I voted. I was strict, strongly against um, raising um, the cap, especially because of the revalve. But until I see the family navigators in there, I'll be supporting this because we need it. And I think that just because that the taxes are going to go up because of things that are not in our control, but family navigators is one thing that directly helps keep people in all of that are having a hard time keeping up with the taxes or other um, increases. Mr. Jill Sander. I'm sorry, and I'm going to keep deferring Ms. Murray has her hand up. Well, I, I, I recognize you. You were raising your hand before. I mean, thank you, Mayor, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I just you know, I want to I want to sort of further echo um, a few comments that were made there. I obviously have no intent of consulting our taxpayers here. I think it's really exactly the opposite. I think that our taxpayers um, understand that we need, if they're going to see increases at this level of increase, then it would be nice for them to see some commensurate service increases as well, and particularly not service cuts, particularly service cuts that are going to, you know, most impact our residents who most need our assistance. So, you know, I, I think the family navigators, I'm so thrilled to hear, uh, Mr. Mayor, that they are already sort of being worked back in. Um, but again, I see a real potential here um, you know, when we have a tremendous number of residents who are going to need services to think about how to address um, the tax burdens that are coming through this reval, can we have an opportunity to identify more grant funds that create more resources to help those kinds of people? Who can do that? Well, our staff that is already stretched and burdened is doing their best and they're still they're pulling in an amazing amount of grant funding given their the um the you know, fact they have to do their jobs at the same time, but why not leverage, you know, an additional grant writer to help them, again, make those opportunities so that we can bring in the money that we can then use to support our citizens, you know. So I think this is um, an opportunity to really think, as you know, Ms. McMurr said, strategically long term, and again, I think that's the signal to Council Member Burnett's point, we cannot control any of this. We are merely signaling. We are trying to, you know, use our time, use our podium to ask these questions, to ask if there are things um, that we need that will make us more efficient in the long run. And I will, last thing I will say, I don't want to repeat myself, but getting the budget book, I just had a chance to finally look. So since 2016, so in the last 10 years, we've added five IT staff members. We've gone from nine to 14. Try to find a business in this country that in the last decade, has added less than half of their IT, has, le has less than doubled their IT capacity, and you will find a business that's no longer functioning, right? We are living in a world where technology is absolutely inescapably part of doing your job and doing it well. Um, and we cannot, as a city, continue to compete in the modern world. We cannot expect our staff members who are used to having resources who are missing on opportunities, who need to be more efficient, who could do more in their jobs if they had the resources that they need. And the same way that private companies have leveraged this kind of tech resources to vastly increase their productivity in the last decade. So um, again, I really appreciate Ms. Uh, Ayers for this amendment forward. And again, I think that at, our, at the end of the day, however each of us votes, the point is this conversation. I think we all are really seeing this as an opportunity to try to, again, signal to our residents that we are thinking about the needs. We are trying to think about how we grapple with the consequences of this reval. And I think that everyone in this room is deeply concerned about the impact of these tax increases on our existing residents. I don't think there's a single person here that isn't thinking about that constantly. What we're really struggling with is what the most effective and efficient way is to help our residents. And I think I, it would be helpful to all make sure that we're coming from that place of respect for our very varied opinions about how to do that. That is the whole point of a council and a debate is so that we're all putting our ideas forward. And hopefully through that, we will come to a way to better achieve more for our residents, given the constraints that we have. Thank you. Ms. Murray and then Mr. Wiggins. 
Yes, I just wanted to say I came into this meeting um, ready to vote for the budget as it is, because I just, as uh, Councilman Smith said, I didn't feel that anybody could could take on any more pain that we were on our threat at the threshold. At the same time, I really moved by comments in our last meeting by Councilman Wiggins, where he said, I don't feel like we're getting bang for our buck. And echoing the majority leader, um, if 300,000, which barely moves the needle on a few dollars, creates more bang for our residents buck with a high tax burden that they're already gonna pay, that makes a, a lot of sense to me. It is a signal. But I also think about when he says, well, how about the people who've lived here? How about the people who have built um, our city? Well, our senior citizens are hurting. They are looking for services. Uh, Ms. McMurr and I, during our campaign, heard a bunch of times that people weren't happy with the services of the senior center, which I did not realize is partly grant funded through our community services and a grant writer could help get them more funding. We have four um, independent living homes in our uh, in our district, in District C, and we have a, a great number of seniors who have helped build this city, who really could use navigation through the services and know that we, and, and a signal that we care about their experience here. So again, um, I think this resolution is really, uh, this amendment really makes sense to signal what's important to our values. And uh, I'm just gonna echo my support on it again. Mr. Wiggins. Once again, I think the things that was mentioned are extremely important. And I think we do need more services. But I also look at a system, when you look at systems that have been doing stuff for 20, 30, 40 years, and for me personally, seeing a community I serve looking the same and just being uprooted um, and pushed to towns like Bridgeport and pushed to towns like Waterbury and Hartford, and not because of they don't want to be here, because they literally can't be here, literally cannot be here. So we talk about like the services, all of this stuff is good, but if we're not intentional about the things and the services in a position that you know we're looking to put in place we're not certain about these things and we're not knowing if they're going to be effective and they're going to be what they act like who's to say we up this budget and that still never happened we still don't get the it we still you know it's still going to come back to the bet all this stuff it's really important for us to look at the system and deal with the system because when i go back to my community it looked exactly the same way when i was a kid so Yes, you know, all the, the family navigators and all that stuff is good. But once again, I think that's putting a, a Band-Aid over a gunshot wound. This stuff, this is deeper than just, <clears throat> like, we got to really start looking at the deep-rooted causes that allow communities like mine to be wiped out of um, a lot of gentrified cities. So once again, I, I came in today not, wasn't going to vote either way. You know, my, my vote was going to be a no because I, I still think that it's high, but I also know that um, there's not a lot of options at this point. And, you know, to, I forgot who it was, Barbara or uh, Nora Point, about us getting these, like, I didn't really have time to, I didn't have time to really go through it. I'm like old school and I like the book. But I, the more I learn, about this process, the more I learn, you know, how all of these, all these things work, it, it makes me sick to my stomach because the communities that's like um, Melissa said, you know, the, the elder communities that help build this, this city is not gonna just do the communities that, you know, I come from, which is, you know, South Norwalk, some of the other um, housing complexes and all of these things and seeing people getting pushed out is, is sickening, you know, because we helped build this city. I remember this city when I was a kid. So it, we all know it's a tough time and we all have different opinions. I'm not for raising the budget for a dollar, but I'm also not, you know, I also think there's positions in the city that can be, you know, we don't need. 
And, and I think we need to really start looking at those positions and seeing if it really bringing value to our city and our residents of the city. Because if it's not bringing values, those are the ones we should get rid of and replace them, replace them with you know things that Nicole is talking about. Because when you look at when you really look at the city and, and these employees, some of this stuff is not necessary to the way of life of the people. You know, and we need to really start having some hard conversations and making some tough decisions um, when it comes to uh you know, getting rid of some of these people that's already, or some of these positions that's already in place and access is really bringing value. Like what, what's the bang to, to Melissa point again, what are we getting for our buck? And, um, you know, we got to have the tough conversations. It's done. <clears throat> okay. Um, I just got this book too. So I'm, I don't feel really responsible in, in speaking to it right now. Um, but just as a, an overview, um, my, my kitchen table math is you spend what you have and maybe put a little aside, you don't spend what you don't have. So I'm, I'm a proponent of a start with a flat budget, not start with 4% or 5% or 3%. Um, the one thing I did notice was the budget assumptions here. Um, our current property taxes only went up 3.6%, yet we're going to put a cap of 4%. And overall, including in this revenue source is the $8 million that from the rainy day fund. So again, we're using our savings to try to cover shortfalls in some areas. And, and the reason I care about that is because I, you know, I think about myself to some degree and it's not, it's not necessarily about me, but I'm like, okay, so my taxes go up 500 bucks a month. What am I going to cut? And then I go to you know, the people on fixed incomes, the retired people who are already stretched thin, what are they going to cut? It's probably medication. It's, you know, it's probably foods. It's spending time with family out at a restaurant. I'd, I'd rather be very fiscally responsible now. And I think it's the responsible thing to do to start with a flat budget. So I, I'm not in favor of um, a 4% cap at this point. Ms. Smith. Um, yeah, just a, a couple more comments. And and Mary, I do want to thank you again um, for um, assuring that the family navigators will be funded this year. That's really um, important to so many of our uh, community. Um, you know, and I just I just want to go back to you know pointing out what uh, um, Mr. Burnett was saying. You know, we know that you know whatever we do here tonight, however this vote goes, it's going to go to the BET. And they will, you know, either consider it or reject it. Um, and and for me, I feel if you know, and and I will still go and speak to the BET on behalf of the uh, family navigators, um, and for thinking, you know, in the future about you know these other positions that we know we need. Um, but if as long as they can fund those family navigators, whether they do it by you know a slight increase or whether they do it by, you know, scrubbing some more and finding the funds elsewhere, um, I will be satisfied with that. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, um, the BET's job, as Mr. Burnett says, is, you know, it's, the, the, you know, it's like they really need, are looking at what we can afford and what that tax increase will mean. And, and if it's a couple of dollars, you know, is, is that really going to matter? But I, I, I actually kind of think that they're going to be able to find a way to scrub a little bit more and fund these positions. I'm hoping. Ms. Young. <laughs> so as I always wait to the end, um, Ms. Ms. Uh, Barbara Smith said exactly what I was thinking. We've all been here before. And we understand that no matter what we say or present to the BET, it's up to them to make that decision. And I think we all know that as frustrating as it is, whether you've been here, this is your first year and you're just finding this out, or whether you've been here 10 years, or you're you're a Mr. Doug Sutton who has history <laughs> and, and can sit there quietly because he's heard it all before. Hmm. Um, that's where we are. Um, we, we know we did this last year for a million dollars. I'm not sure if we got what we wanted. Um, we didn't, um, but we, we went through this agonizing process. Um, but as uh, Ms. Nora Jelski-Eichner mentioned, we're sending a message 
And, and I think we have to continue to send the message about what we as the council, hearing from our constituents feel is necessary. Um, and, and again, Mayor, I'm happy as everyone else is, hopefully around the table to hear that the navigators are included in that. And I thank you, Nicole, for that. I had no idea about it. And so I think most of us are finding that out this evening, which is a good thing, a very good surprise. Um, but there are other things that we do need. We need our grants writer. We need IT to be uh, to have more staff, as it's all been said. But we have to figure out how we make that happen. I've heard a lot of good ideas about a strategy, right? What does that look like if within the next five years, taxes are going to go up? services are still going to be needed as people still come to this city. So how do we manage that? And I think we've got some great ideas that we need to suss out a bit and and, and be able to go to the BET or whomever to state our case. And I think that's where we are right now. And, and looking at these numbers, I don't know. And if I listen to um, my, my partner in District B, um, if we go up based on what this is, over $2,000 in taxes, that's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is clearly a struggle. And I don't care where you live. So we have to be mindful of that. I think we start off with the cap where we are, with the intent and expectation and what we have to let the residents know that we've got a plan moving forward because we know taxes aren't going down next year or probably the year after that. So we as a council and we as a city need to come up with our message and be clear about what our intentions are moving forward so that we don't seem like we're doing this so haphazardly. We spend a lot of time as council going over a budget that we have no influence. And, and it's frustrating for all of us because we know what we'd like to see happen, but we can't see it happen as quickly as we'd like. But there's a lot of work that goes into it um, thank you, Mayor, for this. And I have to say thank you to both you and Dr. Estrella for making this a non-contentious uh, budget cycle. I don't think we could have handled it with, on top of having to, to do increases in taxes. So I really appreciate that. And I hope this trend continues that we have this type of budget um, session moving forward in relationship with the Board of Education. Um, so with that, I cannot support an increase. I don't know if I could look at any of my constituents in the face and go, uh, we know it's a little rough, but are their incomes going up that way? We don't know that, but this is hard. This is a hard decision and none of us come at this lightly. And I hope, lastly, I hope that folks who are watching see that we aren't rubber stamping anything and we all have our opinions and, and share them. And, 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 and the biggest thing is that we listen to each other. Um, we might not like what everybody has to say, but we have to do that respectfully and listen to each other. And I think we've tried to do that. So I thank you. Um, With that, I will call the vote. Would you have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Dixon? Mr. Mayor, part of the mm -hmm. vote. We We're voting on the amendment. I'm sorry. To increase the We're voting on the dollars uh, Miss Ayers' amendment uh, that she read um, it's, would increase the cap by $300,000. We have to vote on the amendment first. And then, depending on whether that passes or not, come back and vote on the original or any other amendment. <laughs> Mr. Burnett? No. Mr. Goldstein? Yes. Mr. Lopez? No. Ms. Najolski Eichner? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Ayers? Yes. Mr. Seed? Yes. Mr. Wiggins? No. Ms. Young? No. Ms. McMurr? Yes. Ms. Murray? Yes. Ms. Dunn? No. Mr. Sutton? No. Mr. Frere? No. Ms. Shanahan? No. Okay, the vote was uh, eight no and seven yes. So the amendment does not pass. Now we bring it back to the original uh, resolution would you please 
do a roll call vote on that. For the original resolution, Mr. Burnett. Yes. Mr. Goldstein. Yes. Mr. Lopez. Yes. Ms. Najilski Eichner. Yes. Ms. Smith. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ms. Ayers. No. Mr. Seed. Yes. Mr. Wiggins. No. Ms. Young. Yes. Ms. McMurr. No. Ms. Murray. Yes. Ms. Dunn. No. Mr. Sutton. Yes. Mr. Frere. Yes. Ms. Shanahan. Yes. The vote was 11 in favor, four opposed. The original resolution does uh, pass. Uh, <clears throat> having said that, um, I want to guarantee to the council <clears throat> that we are still looking at a lot of different little things that we feel we may be able to push forward. As I mentioned, I think we're very confident in getting family navigators in. We do realize how important they are, and I think we can do that within this cap. Uh, so again, thank you to the council. And now I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Ms. Shanahan. All in favor? Opposed? Extensions. Motion carries. We are adjourned at 832. Thank you, members of the council, for all your hard work.